All right, so Brooklyn can go. We're now back east. All right, the masked singer. Stu, do you watch this show? I Ted. actually saw that show. Did you see this one with yeah. this guy playing, yeah. uh, underneath the mask? Yes. And the unveiling, did you have any idea who it was? Uh, based on the guesses that were by the panel, I agreed with uh, Ken. And Ken said it was Dwight Howard. And there it is. And it was Dwight, Dwight the unveiling. And uh, quite the statement as he comes out here in uh, game number one. But I know Laker fans, you know, the first time around for Dwight, just a disaster, really, as far as the how things turned out with the uh, organization and the fans. And then uh, to come back like he did, Stu, to have the attitude that he had, and also to deliver on the floor the way he did, could have been anything. It was all about his, his career and how he realized that uh, after a while that the game had changed. Uh, he was no longer the go-to guy in the post. He had to be more of a role-type player that did certain things. And he came back and he did those things very, very well. So the third time for Dwight, and he says, let's get another one so I can have a proper parade. I think that's what everybody's kind of hoping for as the season begins. The Lakers tied with Boston, the Celtics, 17 championships. So both of those illustrious franchises and even for number 18. There'll be another wide open Eastern Conference, but the... I think many more contenders this year. In and out from AD on the fall away. Everybody chasing the Milwaukee Bucks, and congrats to them. That organization, Giannis and company, <laughs> picked it up last year. I see now another offensive screen foul, but that I mean, one now four <laughs> at least. But that one was not the fault of Claxton. That's the ball handler. If you got a big come in to set a screen, wait till he gets set before you start moving because you're moving, he's moving. It's going to go on him. These two teams will play Christmas Day at the uh, marquee again, late afternoon, 5 o'clock here at Staples Center. Ellington, now with a count, and he's going to go the line and shoot three. He's got just a sweet, sweet one shot. Bruce Brown picks up the foul. One of the things you don't want to do defensively is foul three point shooter. He got all of the body. Of Wayne Ellington, so Wayne will go to the line for about a half an hour and wait for three free throws. Well, when Wayne was with the Lakers uh, back in 2014-15, he actually led the team in three-point percentage. Nine different NBA squads he's uh, been on. And, you know, it's, it's one of those guys, that shot will travel. And that's exactly what Wayne's got it for. Uh, on that, here's Mike Trudeau. Yeah, Billy, so Wayne Ellington's role this year is certainly going to be interesting to see. He starts tonight off the bench, but there is a school of thought to think that he would be a nice fit alongside, uh, particularly for a shooting right of Anthony Davis and LeBron James and Russell Westbrook. Uh, but tonight, of course, Bazemore got to start maybe a bit of an advantage on the defensive end there. And then the other big question is, what are they going to do with the center spot? Tonight, DeAndre starts. Anthony Davis has floated the idea that there could be some games in which he starts. So, uh, some questions, guys, and that's what the preseason is for, right, Sue? So, uh, we're going to see all these things come together, and they'll get a better idea probably by the fifth game what the lineup's going to look like. Absolutely. That's what the preseason is all about. And then you mentioned the fact that Anthony Davis is going to possibly play a lot more in the middle at the five. Uh, it's not like it was in the old days when you took a beating and when you're defending bigger guys in defense, nobody posts up these days. So <laughs> he's not going to take Listen, any kind of a physical beating. As you know, there's so much positionless basketball now in the NBA. The defined roles are certainly not what it used to be as AD had position and Claxton was in trouble and he picks up the foul. Man, look at that easy hoop. <laughs> And that's off to dribble. And that's something the Lakers are going to have to have to see that the preseason keeps going on. The, the defensive principles will continue to evolve and they'll get better uh, defending off the dribble. Yeah, it was Bruce Brown. Remember in game three against Milwaukee? He had a great game, double double, 16 and 11. He actually had five postseason starts for Steve Nash. And the Nets. As AD, you know, throughout the course of the career, he's been a really good free throw shooter. But remember last year early on, yeah. he really had his struggles to begin the season from a lot. It's all mental. I, I still say it's all mental. You got to go up to that line, you, and you got to know you're going to knock it down. If there's any doubt in your mind, it's going to show. He averaged nearly 22 points, eight rebounds, a little over three assists, shot 74 percent from the line last year in his 36 games that he played. Again, had that groin injury that forced him out of the playoffs. 
Also, Piper extended his left knee late. The original injury, though, was uh, that calf injury near the Achilles earlier in the year that kept him out for 30 games. We're under two minutes to play one on the shot clock, and the Lakers are going to turn it over. They're not, and down it goes. That was one of those he had no other choice, but it was a good luck. Takes all the pressure off the shoot. The coach is yelling for you to shoot it with the shot clock where it was. And that's Thomas, who I talked about earlier. Boy, he had a lot of Nets fans excited about how he looked in summer league. Thought Anthony Davis had a steal and posted free, but he realized that the clock was winding down, and when he got possession, Thomas did one thing. Drill. Look, I don't care what level of play it is. He averaged 27 in four games in summer league. That's like it up. Air ball, going to be taken by Rondo. The bounce goes to Ellington. He's open. He set. He fires. He does not get. And the rebound goes to Aldridge. Ten points for Brown to lead both teams. AD's got six right now to lead the Lakers. As it's the lid lifter of the preseason schedule. Thomas, good little move, wanders into the lane around Rondo and scores. Nice little sidestep to avoid the charge. Keep a step in concentration. Knock down the little baby shot. Yeah. Played at LSU. Here's THT. The move. Might recall Horton Tucker last preseason had that 33 point outburst against the Clippers, and he really just uh, solidified his spot, I think, in the regular season with that one last year. Well, that again, spin. That's what that's what he likes to do right there. I mean, that's uh, the name of the game. You, as an offensive player, you want to always go to the things that you do best. As a defender, I'm supposed to do, make you do things you don't do very well. So you see who wins that kind of a battle as the course of the game unfolds. 65 games last year, those uh, nearly a handful of starts. Turns 21 on November the 25th. And you talked about how he needs to improve the three-point percentage. Shot 28% last year from beyond the arc. So work diligently on that in the offseason. With the dribble, a little reach in by Rondo. <laughs> Rondo grabbed him around the waist. <laughs> no question about that. Uh, infraction. <laughs> you realize that the Lakers this year, Steve, have seven out of the last ten assist champions in the NBA. Three times Rondo, three times Russ, and one time LeBron. That's why you can't have enough shooters on this team. You have guys that are going to be giving the ball yep. up. You know, guys are going to receive double teams. Mm -hmm. Shooting. Who are the three others? Well, CP3 did it twice, and then James Harden was on the other bench. Was an assist leader one year out of the line.